once you're on TikTok and watching renegade, 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 grades are not everything. GPA is not everything. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you don't already know, I like to make videos about college, lifestyle, productivity, dumb stuff, traveling, and anything else that I decide to put on the internet. And if that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe, comment, like, follow me on Instagram, and stay connected with me. Today I am doing a video in my mom's room. <laughs> uh, my mom's bathroom has really nice lighting and it has great uh, echo, reverb, whatever. <laughs> Nice audio, and I'm wearing my pajamas, and my hair is in a bun, so it's gonna be a pretty chill, not so scripted, but kind of scripted video about how I study at UC Berkeley, how I got straight A's last year at UC Berkeley, except summer school, um, study abroad, physics, we don't talk about that. <laughs> But besides that, spring and fall, I did get all A's and the previous semesters I've gotten almost all A's. And so I want to share some tricks and habits I picked up, not just at Berkeley, but study habits that really helped me in high school, junior high, helps you study not only effectively, but efficiency. And so let's get straight to the video. What situations and environments you can study best in? So, is that in the morning, in the afternoon, is it in the middle of the night? Is that a coffee store, library, at home, your friend's house? Figure out how you study best and then also by yourself, groups, maybe a two person. Also figure out, like, do you like to listen to music, ASMR? Figure out maybe motivating way for you to want to study. You get to listen to like a new SoundCloud album or a new soundtrack or I personally like listening to electronic music or movie scores, so like the Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack. Figure out what you like to do so you can make studying a little bit more enjoyable. Stop thinking that you'll pull through on the final because most of the time, like the final is gonna be the hardest test all year. So I don't understand those people who are like, oh, I'll just do well in the final and they just bomb the first and second midterm. Try to do well from the beginning. Therefore, your final doesn't mean as much because even the smartest people usually don't do extremely well on vinyl, but they rely on like their previous scores to help them get a good grade. So don't have that mentality of like, oh, I'll just ace the final. Because especially in college, when is the last time you aced a final, you know? Put yourself at the best professor, put yourself in the class at the best curve. How can you make your life a little easier? So do that extra research to figure out when is the best time to take it and who it is the best to take it with. I know everyone says this, go into class doing the readings already. Even if you don't even do the readings, just skim the headings, skim the title, skim the syllabus of what's going on today at class just so you go in a little less blind. During the first two weeks of class for any class, gauge out the class, how is this teacher teaching and writing the notes and the lecture and the homework and all that stuff, and then figure out a note-taking system for that class because I know people like to take notes differently for every class. So the sooner you figure out your note-taking system for that class, the better because then you're not gonna be that person because I used to be that person if I, I'm so picky and particular about my notes that I just wouldn't write it at all because I was like, well, like they have to be a certain way. And so don't let your professor perfectionist slash OCD tendencies to um, stop you from taking notes. So some people don't even take notes. Whatever your style is, figure out your style fast. This one I know sounds a little bit obvious, but I really struggled with this going through organic chemistry. How many of you all, during lecture, everything was crystal clear and you're like, oh my gosh, this makes perfect sense. Like, I am so smart. I'm keeping up with the professor. Line by line, I understand what she or him or they are doing. And then you go home, and then you try to do the homework and you're like, they never taught this, like this is not in the lecture. And then you realize, oh wait, it was in the lecture, it is in the textbook, but you just forgot how to do it. And now you don't understand or remember how to do the steps because at the time it was so obvious that so you didn't take much notes on it. So like write it out the obvious steps. That way when you go back to your notes, you'll exactly know, oh yeah, I was supposed to do this, I was supposed to do that. And you don't feel like I have no idea what to do. I highly suggest people write questions or things they come to mind during the time the professor is speaking just because one, they'll either answer maybe within the next few minutes, like coincidentally, or two, 
maybe that's something you need to get answered or there's like a gap of knowledge where you just quite didn't understand. So whether that's office hours or email, you can reach out to your professor. And once you do, the best case scenario is when they say, oh my gosh, don't worry about that question. It's not even gonna be on the test or it's not relevant. Or they say, oh wow, this is really important. I'm so glad you mentioned it. Like I didn't talk about it in class or oh, let me explain to you like where your gap of knowledge is and like this is how it's supposed to be done. So write out all the questions you have. Also, it keeps you engaged and critically thinking and always questioning and checking in like, okay, what don't I know? What don't I know? What don't I know? What don't I know? And then that way when you're like studying for a final or you're studying for a quiz, you know exactly what you didn't know and you can go back to those points to like recheck that you do know. And I know this one is really, really obvious, but get off your phone. I know it's really hard because some of these classes last like 1.5 to two hours. You cannot sit down and focus for that long. But once you're on your phone, once you're scrolling on Instagram, once you're on TikTok and watching you don't stop and you kind of tone, uh, zoom out, zoom out, you kind of tune out the professor. So I highly recommend either you turn your phone off or put it in airplane mode or this is a really good idea too. If your class doesn't do video recording or audio recording, you can always ask your professor, hey, can I record your lecture? I feel like all my <laughs> I feel like all my professors, nine times out of 10, if they're not already recorded, if someone asks, they say, yeah, sure, just put your phone up in the podium. Or this way you're actually, one, recording the lecture so you can hear it at any time you want if you want to reference something. And two, you won't be on your phone because the phone is in front of your professor. It's like it's on his or her or day's desk, right? So that's another good life hack too, to get off your phone, period. If you get distracted easily and you need to stay busy, you bring like an extra sheet of paper to doodle or a fidget spinner or bring food. Like food always keeps me busy and I listen because I'm eating and I'm engaged and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. So whatever you can do get off your phone. Figure out early on what you don't need to know and what you do need to know. That way you can save yourself time. My whole thing on school and studying and grades is that yes, grades are not everything. GPA is not everything. I know that. But sadly, a lot of the industries still today heavily rely on what grades you get. Medical school, law school, grad school. And so it is important that you kind of do the best or like win the game, the system in this academic and educational institutional ecosystem thing we have going on, you know? We have to win the simulation. We're all in a simulation and we have to win it. So I'm here to help you save time, learn, yes, but to also do well on exams. We have active studying and passive studying. And passive studying is more of like the cleaning up your notes, rewriting your notes, or reading reading stuff, underlining stuff. It's more a passive form of absorbing information. As of active studying is when you're doing like practice tests, practice problems, homework questions, and applying the knowledge that you have stored into application situations. Obviously active is much challenging. A lot of classes require a different ratio of active studying to passive studying. Usually passive studying does come first so you can first learn the material and so what I like to do pretty quickly is once I finish passive studying I like to do like a round of active studying whether that's questions practice tests practice quizzes with my notes so I'm not completely in the cold and then that way I can know what exactly I'm struggling at and like how many times I need my notes because I know a lot of people after passive studying they try active studying or like a practice test and they know nothing and they feel super discouraged and like I'm so dumb I don't know anything but try once doing active studying with your notes and then slowly like weed yourself off your notes and like how much you can retain even before active or passive studying at first figure out how your uh, materials could be tested is it going to be a essay test is it going to be a free response test is it going to be a multiple choice test is it going to be a, a mix of everything else if you have to be writing and drawing out cyclohexanes and organic chemistry you probably shouldn't be practicing with flashcards because you just have to recognize as of free response you actually have to draw it out and so if you have to draw your answers out on a test you should probably practice also drawing it out when you're passive and active studying. If their test is multiple choice, then it's probably efficient to do like a Word document. You put down all the definitions, you cram in as much information as possible. You use Quizlet a lot to help you just recognize correct and incorrect terms. And that way the multiple choice, it's similar. It has that like, okay, that's right, that's wrong, that's right. I had a test once where I did Quizlet and flashcards and um, like a Word document style, just like a big study guide of text I typed out. But my exam asked me, okay, here are the symptoms of this certain disease blank, you know, 
blue eyes and sweaty palms and high blood sugar, right? What's the name of this disease? And I knew what that disease was if I saw it in a list of four choices because I just had recognized the word, but I couldn't recall it on my own to produce it, to write it. And so studying was ineffective because that's not the way I was studying versus that's not the way I was tested. So make sure you are studying in the same format as the way you're tested to save yourself time so your brain is trained in that correct way. In terms of time management, I love using the app Notion. So Notion is basically Google Drive meets Asana. And if you don't know what Asana is, Asana is a task slash assignment slash to-do website app service platform and you can share with people and it can get really intricate and you can have a timeline of things. But Notion is basically Google Drive meets Asana and you can put in all your work there, you can type up essays in there and you can also create these boards of like any type of board really. I like to use it for like my YouTube channel, for my work, for my studying. But if you have like a lot of assignments and you can track, okay in this column you can just drag and drop. Before study, like I made the notes. I did the practice problems. I am fully ready. You can like drag and drop these blocks. And so it's really nice to have it visually organized to see it like that. I used Notion last semester and it was really great. Notion is a free app, but the premium version does cost more money. But if you are a student with a .edu email, if you download the free version, but make the account with your .edu, then press upgrade to premium. I think it automatically does it for you for free. I highly recommend people check out Notion. It's one of my favorite apps. And Super aesthetic, the UI UX is beautiful. Go check it out. This is not sponsored by Notion. <laughs> So in terms of getting closer to that test or quiz, test corrections is a really big part of doing well on the actual exam. My number one advice I give people is that when you do a practice test, whether it's multiple choice, free response, essay, true or false, whatever it is, write out when you're not timing yourself, write out the steps. And this type of question is an acid beta OCAM question. Then number one, we're gonna deprotonate the hydrogen. Number two, we're gonna do this because that's what we're supposed to do, right? And you can even try to source it to one of your pages on your notes so you know exactly what each category of thing is coming from. And also if it's multiple choice, there's usually one that's really similar but not correct. And instead of just memorizing what's right, it's also good to recognize what's wrong. Let's say the correct answer was one of the symptoms is red skin. You can, but it says blue skin. So you can be like, write, write a note to the side saying, the correct answer technically this should have said red skin not blue skin and so that way you're constantly recalling what the correct information is and you're being able to recognize what's incorrect but very similar to answers that um, could be a possibility so test corrections test corrections test corrections especially on the questions you get wrong i would always go back and source it to some part in the notes some part in the lecture and even write a little mini summary of like that section because clearly you struggled to recall it that way you can see on your practice exam, you didn't just miss the question because, oh, you just like had a brain fart. You missed the question because um, you actually had a gap in knowledge. I like study guides a lot just because it helps me and condense a lot of the information to its bare bones that I need. If it's something STEM related, I like to write out each example of each type of question or concept possible. Business and econ is heavily reliant on definition and examples and so I'll definitely put those in. I love study guides, it's like a good one-sheeter and you can definitely do a lot of really great understanding and work with study guides. My last and most important tip about studying is that stop studying stuff you already know. And I'm super guilty of this too, but I feel like a lot of times when we're stressed out or nervous about a test, we keep restudying the content we already know and never get to the content we don't really know because we feel better about ourselves that we're just studying the stuff we know. I did that. I am guilty of that. So the quicker and sooner you start studying the stuff you don't know, the better because you're probably gonna get those questions wrong. Obviously, it's important to study everything, even the questions you've been getting right, but that should be an afterthought after really mastering the places you don't have an understanding at all for. Be efficient, be effective with your study. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative. I hope this was educational. I hope this was engaging. I know this was a little bit of a long one, but it's such a big, topic and I just want to share all my secrets and tricks and trips, my tricks and tips for you all because I get asked this so often and at the end of the day, try your best, 
be smart about studying, but also studying is not everything. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you want to see next. If you like this video, give a comment, like, subscribe, follow me on social media, all that great stuff. Leave below also your favorite studying tips, your favorite studying hacks, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Let's make the comment section below a uh, community, or like a Reddit forum thread of all great studying tips and tricks and how to really finesse the system of an educational institution that we are a part of. Until next time, see you later, bye. <laughs>